Ah, uh, let's get it. Florida State Seminoles live. Yeah, we're early. We are early, and uh, we are on the highway today, and uh, we are with the skeleton crew here. Here we go. Jason, where are you? Oh, the NHL got in the way. James, we never know about James. James is out there taking care of kids and, and uh, youth leagues and all sorts of stuff, but we got Logan on the road, on the interstate. Logan, how's the ride going? It's going good. I, I, the connection is holding on by a little thin bit here. Uh, we, we've been driving from Tallahassee all the way. We're getting close to Dallas. Still got about two hours out from that. But this has been a drive that I will forever remember and definitely regret when I have to drive back next week home. But for right now, it's very fun just going through Shreveport, which all FSU fans know about that that's like now our one of our favorite places to go play ball games it's kind of sad i'm actually coming up on the stadium over here which is pretty interesting but uh yeah it's going it's going good i thought we could sit on here and talk some ball always with you i wouldn't think that uh shreveport louisiana would be that close to dallas no i got i've got a good little ways to go i've got a good little ways i think shreveport's my last kind of big City. I'm looking at a huge stadium right now. Two huge stadiums. I don't know. This could be a high. This could be a high school stadium, uh, for what it's worth. Uh, but yeah, we we we've, we've been on the road for a good long while. I haven't gone crazy yet. You said you have about 250 miles, right? Yeah, yeah. I so what? Not, we're not three three and a half hours. Hopefully, something yeah. like that. Yeah. Cool. The last time I was in Dallas was for the. Uh, Oklahoma State game. Uh, yeah, this is definitely in Streetport Stadium right here, at the Independence Bowl. I am looking right at it. Okay. Wow, that is, it's, it's gorgeous, sir. Let's see if we can get a, there's a live shot of the stadium there. There it is. You got a pretty good there shot for us there. Uh, look at nice that. Nice work. <laughs> Perfect timing. This is all stage. Me and Mark planned all of this. So we can look at of course. FSC fans' favorite stadium. Logan charted it, GPS, boom. If we come on at 6, I'll be driving by about 6.10. Nailed it. Nailed it. Yeah. it All right, out. folks, you know the deal. Florida State Seminoles Live. Yeah. We're here with uh, comments and questions. We'll take everything you've got there in the live chat. And uh, Logan's got one big story for us, uh, one uh, recruiting note. And uh, we will soon be, whether it's on this show or – uh, here on the channel, maybe with Nate Greer from Logan from uh, Noel Game Day, the um, carving through all these recruits that are visiting in the month of June. It's going to be crazy. It's going to be great. We're going to have all sorts of activity. Obviously, it's just going to be a bunch of visits, but then should be a ton of commits after that. So a lot going on this college football season across the board, but especially with Florida State in June. So to get that started, Logan, we got Kane Madden right out of the gate. Dead period over. He's jumping on campus. He is. He is going to be here right away once that dead period is finally over. Once When you talk to Nate uh, later this evening, he, he, he was not a big fan of how long this dead period lasted. And I think a lot of recruits, and this is a transfer, but still a lot of recruits weren't so happy with how long it has lasted. But it's something interesting to see that Kane Madden, right off the bat, his first visit is going to be to Florida State, one of the best offensive linemen, the best lineman in the transfer portal right now has Florida State uh, locked up in there in his first visit. Uh, it's huge for the Knolls, obviously. We, we talked about it last week, but this is a guy that extremely talented. He's an immediate starter. I think a lot of some fans were complaining about getting, you know, another, uh, getting a guard, you know, you'd like to have a tackle, but at this, at this stage, you know, you take an All-American, no matter what that line up position, he's that coming at offensive line, I think. I think, you know, we've been through it the last five, six years of just, you know, this poor production there on that line. So I don't think FSU fans really have the kind of say so and saying, hey, I don't I don't want this guy here. Or we, we, I would rather take a tackle. No, 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 no. You're going to take a guy that's an NFL, is going to the NFL, he's going to get picked in the NFL draft. You're going to take an offensive lineman like this. And, and you know, you can – Coach Atkins has a pretty interesting job. If, if Kane Madden doesn't land with FSU, Coach Atkins has a pretty big job ahead of him on setting all these pieces together. Who fits where? I think there's going to be a lot of adjusting. I could try to predict the starting offensive line. 
people that get that ass all, all the time. But I, I really don't know. A lot of things are going to change. In my opinion, they changed last fall camp, and they're going to change a lot more going into this fall camp. So uh, it's just big that Florida State didn't gain Madden on, Mark, for the first visit because, I mean, that I think I think they, things are already – I think there's things already silently done, uh, but I think it's just the, getting a chance to come visit in person is just going to be uh, uh, the end. I'll be on. They'll, they'll do it. So good spot up as he's in. Have you seen, and of course, when it's Marshall and when it's an offensive lineman, it's hard to find tape on the guy. It's not like a wide receiver who's catching 80 passes and there's a ton of highlights there on him. But man, I, I just, as soon as I found out about this guy, I was curious just because if you look at all American lists, they're, they're just packed with power five players. Obviously you've got to do something. If you're a group of five players, especially at a place like Marshall, not Boise state, not UCF or Cincinnati, you got to do something. And then again, it's not again, a running back wide receiver where, Boom, this dude ran for 1,800 yards, so he's going to be an All-American because he just trampled over defenses, even if he was at a group of five school. So this guy must be just crazy good to get this kind of attention at Marshall to be on the second team All-American team at Marshall as an offensive lineman. Yeah. yeah that I doesn't think, happen. Uh, pro football folks. Yeah, it's it's kind of rare to be in that position as a player for him and, and Marshall. There's a few there. There's a few that come out of the, you know these smaller schools and they blow up and they do excellent and the next level too. But you know he's coming. You know, Pro Football Focus put him as one of the top 35, I believe, players returning in college football overall. I think he was ranked at number 32 overall, being you know one of the best college football players coming into this next season, which that is gigantic. Uh, definitely for an offensive lineman that Florida State could have in their favor. This guy's talented. He's a great run blocker. Florida State has a stable of running backs. There's a lot of talent there. There's young backs. You're looking at Toa Philly, too. Treshawn Ward, who had a fantastic spring, who just recently got put on scholarship. And we know about Corbin, who I think is going to be the day one starter. Uh, there, there's a lot of – and you have D.J. Williams, who just recently transferred from Auburn. So you have a stable of running backs that, you know, Kane Madden is going to give you some holes. That, that, that's going to be – about a guarantee and then you know you look at you just brought on Gibbons too from Notre Dame you know just trying to put the pieces in the right spot is going to be key for this there's talent there but Atkins is going to have you know his recruiting is on point right now just got to figure out who fits where the best and you know we'll see but that you're right Kane Madden it, it brings a different kind of element and it's going to help this offense because Norvell wants to run more than anything he wants to run so Kane Madden's the perfect guy for that open up a hole sealing it off so then Toa Philly can take it for 70. Yeah, like you said, uh, tackles the sexier position. Those guys obviously have to play more in space. They got to be a little bit quicker, more nimble on their feet. They got to back up, back pedal a lot more than the guards. And obviously, again, play those DNs and those edge rushers and uh, protect the quarterback there. But uh, every position is important. The guard position, obviously, you want to be able to run the ball uh, in the one and two gaps up front. And uh, you got to protect the passer from the front. A lot of that uh, pressure that the quarterbacks hate more than anything is that pressure right in their face. And uh, if Gibbons turns out to be a player in Madden, uh, they can bring him in if they can bring him in. And obviously he's uh, sought after all over the place. Then that would be huge for the Knowles. All right. Talking Florida State football. We do that every Wednesday. Yeah, we're a little bit early, but this guy's on the interstate. So, man. We, we just wanted to get a show together. We got uh, Jason at covering the NHL tonight with the Panthers, uh, big game James doing whatever he's doing, and uh, we're throwing it together. We got Logan on the road uh, just past Shreveport. All right, tracking Logan on the road, and uh, let's get to your comments here in just a second. We got, uh, we got Elijah. Good to see you there. Hey, Monroe. Monroe's... Uh, on uh, Facebook, joining us on Facebook, go Knowles. I know that the uh, ride on Facebook has been a little rough this year, so uh, just stay tuned on Facebook. We're going to change some things around, and we'll be there available for you every week on Facebook as well. Coming up, um, Sue. Sue's got a bone to pick with me. 
I got a bone to pick with you, Mark Rogers. Where was my 2 p.m. Ohio State show today? Mm, okay. Your, your Ohio State show, so it's going to be just as good as it normally is, but we're going to make it wait just a little bit longer. It's coming up tomorrow. It's going to be Thursday this week. A little scheduling conflict. So, Sue, just look out for the notifications. It's coming your way Thursday. Uh, he's a wants to know if my man's on I-10. We are not. A, I've been way gone from I-10. That, that was back in the early stages of the morning. We are way gone on I-10. We are on I-20 West. So double that. We're on I-20 West. I'm starting to get Texas signs. We're almost there. Uh, even though once I reach Texas, I've still got a pretty good ways to go. But I'm, I'm excited. I'm, I'm ready to be back in Dallas. I'm going to go see Jerry's World where Florida State, I was there for that one. Florida State beat Oklahoma State. Uh, went to Billy Bob's. Had a Well, I wasn't old enough to drink then, but uh, enjoyed enjoyed a good time at Billy Bob's and the rodeo and all that kind of jazz. So I'm enjoying this driving and just talk some Florida State ball. I mean, there's nothing better. Absolutely. Mike Myrick's here. What's up, Voice of College Football? So what's up to my Noel bro Logan? Go Knowles. Mike's on the line. Good stuff. Ooh, uh, weird. All right. Uh, Jeremy, good to see you. Jeremy, uh, wondering what happened to the baseball team today. Uh-oh. I did not. I think that the, I thought the game was uh, tomorrow, but I might be wrong. I might be completely wrong, and I might be the worst FSU uh, site coverer ever. Analyst. I'll check up I on that. I have not touched my phone that much. I've tried not to. Wayne Tillman, go Knowles. Good job, Logan. Nah. Got uh, Jeremy, hurry up football season. Yeah, Sue, we'll see you tomorrow. Thanks for being here, Sue. Like to see the other fan bases jump in here. Yeah, Adon B, Logan on the run. He's a... All right, good to see all of you. We're going to dive into questions, so you guys can obviously leave your questions, and those are the priority, the live questions on the live chat. We will get to those but in addition to that, I'm going to run through the questions that we've got here that come into the channel all the time in response to the live shows and the videos uh, with the Rewatch Squad. And I never get to them. I got 22 channels. I never respond to these questions, and that's not a good thing, or hardly ever do. So why not uh, take that approach today? So to get us going, Logan, since I've got to find a decent question or comment, Here's my question for you. My question is, looking back at your time as a Florida State fan, what is the best victory you've ever experienced? Not necessarily going to the national championship game. If that's, if that's, if that's not it, just for whatever reason, if there's another one that just because it was a just hit you the right way or it still brings a smile to your face or whatever the situation was, the one win that you cherish the most as a Florida State fan? I think other than obviously Pasadena, and that's going to be everybody's that they attended that. That's about, can't even put that on any other tier. But I think my second one, and it's the same season, we knew Jameis was special. We knew this this offense was able to score. This defense was physical. But, you know, we were still a little kind of – as fans, we felt intimidated going into that stadium at night. They were one to break the – they were one to break the uh, decibel record and all that kind of jazz. And LaMarcus Joyner said, hell no, that's not happening. But that, that being up there – up there and the nosebleeds looking straight down. If anybody's been in Death Valley and you're at the top up there, or usually the visiting team, and uh oh, Logan, can you hear me? Are sitting. You're you're look. You are you are really chopping up. Straight. We really can't hear much what you're saying. Down. It's very, very scary, actually, in that stadium. That game in, in Clemson, that, that was phenomenal. So that might be a problem. Can you hear me now? 
Yeah, I think we got you. Keep on going. Uh-oh. Jump back about 30 seconds and okay, retell your story. Say, uh, that fight... Okay. I think I was going into talking about Clemson, how I love their campus there. It's beautiful. So I, I think that whole weekend being there, you know, Florida State, you know, kind of shocking, shocking the nation and really saying, hey, this is this is a not even a ACC champion kind of caliber team. This is a national champion caliber team. That's exactly what Jameis did and the defense did on that night. It wasn't just the offense scoring four points, but that defense, it, it wasn't even fair. It wasn't even fair. So I'd probably say that Clemson game and then one little other one, I'd probably say 2014 Notre Dame. That was Joe Campbell's game. I haven't heard it that loud since. Um, it was incredible watching Carlos Williams, or not Carlos, but it was actually uh, Travis Rudolph going in and making that score there into the end zone on the uh, right in front of the student section. I remember that. Clear as day. Uh, but yeah, I think, uh, I think those probably two have to be my favorites. So, uh, scanning the questions that come into the channel here, uh, as you can imagine, most people just, uh, complaining a little bit or just saying go Knowles and, and, uh, just a lot of those kind of comments. So there are a number of comments coming in Logan about, uh, coach Chris Marv, not necessarily people happy with him and, um, uh, you know, one one comment in particular I'll pick out is Jay Jackson likes what he is as a mentor and a motivator, but in terms of player development, would like to see more out of him. Yeah, I think we talked a little bit about him maybe last week too, and the recruiting hasn't been so great so far on his front. I think a lot of this, you know, not having a great season obviously last year, and not having not being able to have recruits come visit is a big one, but you know. They can't really have too many excuses while other position coaches are over there dealing some guys and bringing in guys and getting them to commit, getting them to sign. Marva, you know, is, is, is I, I don't know what the really what the main problem is. He's got to he's got to start landing somebody soon. Uh, and also, the production at linebacker has got to be a little bit better. I think I think he's a great guy, great mentor. Very, he's been very successful. Uh, he's just kind of been in a standstill and recruiting and kind of getting beat by other schools. Uh, I'm interested to see if things change for him once the season starts and you're able to see how much playing time these younger guys are getting. I think you look at also Stephen Diggs Jr. Uh, you got DJ Lundy who got a lot of playing time last year. I think I think I think it's just going to take the season starting for Marv to really get cooking. Who knows? You know, like the dead period ends on June 1st. You're going to have players come visit. This could be a game changer. Maybe he's just more of an in-person. Maybe Zoom isn't the greatest for him. Texting isn't the greatest. Maybe it's in-person. He does better. Uh, but, yeah, there's got to be some better. Uh, got to gotta, gotta get back on gear here in that linebacker room because they need talent and they really need depth. Talking Florida State football with you. We got Logan Robinson, of course, one of the staples of our Florida State Hour here every week, 108 straight. And uh, Wednesday at 6 o'clock Eastern time. So no schedule change here uh, on a regular basis. So back at 6 o'clock, we believe, every Wednesday. So every so often, we got to change things up and accommodate some schedules. So we had to go early today. So hopefully most of you will catch up on the rewatch. But uh, 5 o'clock today, but 6 o'clock, as I've got it stated there on the banner, FSU Seminoles Live, Wednesday at 6 Eastern. So nothing's changed permanently. All right. Shea Crockett is saying here on one of the comments that came in two days ago uh, in response to more about the defense that this is not going to be a quick rebuild. The players have had to work three different schemes in three years, and that's been difficult. So are they going to have pretty much the same scheme this year as they had last year? I think it really depends. I I want to – I don't know if they're – I forget in the spring and some – probably should really I'm trying to remember what was going on during the spring game but I think they're going to be trying to run as much as they did last year I think it was more there were there were players that were put in the right position it's just they there weren't plays being made of course we see things where you know it gets posted on Twitter where you've got DBs that are lined back six yards off the ball where the first down marker you know it's only two yards and so it's irritating and obviously that kind of stuff has got to be fixed i don't think i think covid really hurt we've been talking about it on our podcast too for a little for the last couple of weeks we think 
you know, COVID-19 didn't really help too much for Adam Fuller to really figure out who fits where best. We saw that a lot with Gaynor and other guys. And even on the defensive line and DB, the DB room was just all over the place. You know, Jerry and Jones was your day one starter. And then, you know, just to have a good season and then you're tossing around Miko Dotson, who wasn't fully healthy. You've got Brownlee in there too. who was kind of a surprise from spring camp. Uh, I think that the COVID-19 did not help the staff out whatsoever on the defensive side. That's why I think hopefully Florida state is, with that spring, being able to have that full spring, have full practices, be able to go through those films, be able to go through those walkthroughs, all these different kind of things, and figure out who fits where best is going to be huge. Because right now, the biggest question mark is on your two starting corners. Who will that be? It was kind of a revolving door a little bit. Each, each game, we were kind of wondering who's going to be the starting corners because it was either not healthy, bad play on the field, uh, et cetera. Uh, the, the biggest question is there. So I think really depending on scheme, whatever it is, I, I think players overall though were put in, in the right position to just win plays being made. And we saw that numerous times. And I, I think uh, the, the production on defense is going to be better. If not, then uh, that's, you can say goodbye to your, your defensive coordinator before the Florida game. Yeah, no doubt about that. And uh, I'm not making an excuse for Mike Norvell or Florida State. This is just the way it is. And you can go across the country and see this. COVID was hard on everybody, every program. But if you had a coach and a coaching staff that was basically in place for, let's say, five or 10 years, then they've got the same systems. They know the players. The players know them. They've got their structure built, their culture, their environment, the locker room. Everything's already set. It just interrupts practice, and it's still tough on them. But when you've got a new head coach who can't even talk to the players in person, can't implement his structure, his terminology, anything he wants to change with culture, environment, and doesn't have that personal relationship face-to-face -face with the players and can't get them on the field. And they, they got in, what, about five practices last year uh, during the spring before they got taken off the field, something like that? Yeah, I think it was like, it might have been, it, it would have been five max. I think they had two and they had one day of uh, shells. And I think after that, it was, they were cut, yeah. Talking Florida State football here every Wednesday night at 6. Had to go early tonight, so this is not a permanent change. 6 o'clock Eastern. Uh, Logan, what do you guys have going on at uh, no game day these days? Nothing nothing too crazy. The same old, same old. Just doing a lot of uh, shows, just like you, Mark. Just getting shows done during this offseason. We're going to try to bring on a lot of guests. Uh, we're going to continue to keep on giving some nuggets. We've been all over the Kane Madden stuff. So I definitely suggest if you guys are listening now to go check out, um, uh, uh patreon.com slash no game day, connect to the discord. So if, if, uh, Jason was here, he'd rip me on saying discord five times, but now he can't even say anything, Mark. So he can't even come after me, but yeah, just doing a lot of stuff inside news nuggets over there. Uh, and being able to communicate and chat with you guys as it's kind of like the slow period, but now it's going to start bumping with recruiting going on. So I highly suggest you guys, I keep on saying it, you're going to have a very boring off season if you're not inside of the discord, I'm telling you. And then you're also going to, you're going to have a very boring off season if you're not subscribed or liking this video that you're watching right now, because there's nothing better than this 108 weeks. I don't know of any other show on YouTube that's doing this. So, if you hit that like button, it was, I'll safely get there to Dallas in two hours. So there we go. We are here regardless of the circumstances. So even with Logan on the road, Jason off covering hockey, James, we don't know where he is. We're here talking Florida State. So here we are. Uh, Logan, if there's a guy on the defense that could really be a star, and uh, I think we've seen flashes, no doubt. It's Amari Gaynor, right? It would be nice to see him play a full 12 regular season games plus a bowl game and just stay healthy, be on the field, and just emerge as a great player. Yeah, no, there's a lot of 
a lot of excitement for Gainer heading into this season. There was a lot before it too, but I, I was going to mention this earlier you know, when we were talking about the defense. You know, he wasn't put in the right position group or position last year. Uh, a lot of ways on where he was being uh, set on the field. I didn't like the packages that Fuller and Marv were putting him in. It just doesn't fit his kind of talent. Uh, he, he needs to be a speedy guy. I, I, he was working well on blitzes against Boise State two years ago or three years ago or two years ago. But, you know, what happened to that? What happened to, you know, using him, utilize him to go after rush that quarterback? I think you're going to see a lot more of that this upcoming season. He did that while a child and we were playing together and, you know, that's, that's why he was he was a starting weak side defensive end. He, he was – that's why he was getting recruited to FSU. Uh, so, I think Florida State is going to try to do that more. He's put on some pounds. He looks good. And he's got to build that bottom base a little bit more to be really set as a defensive end, per se. But I think he's going to be utilized more, you know, in, in certain situations as, uh, as this certified pass rusher, which is good because he's an he's a east to west really good tackler, physical. Why not utilize that and put him near up on the line whenever you've got Jermaine Johnson up there, Keir Thomas, McLendon, you got Sean Fuller. Um, I mean, I, I think Gaynor has a pretty – if they're able to put him in the right spot, that, that happens in everybody's defenses. You usually have that one kind of hybrid linebacker, defensive end guy that just if you can figure out the right notch at where he fits best, it's, it's over. You know, it, it works perfectly for your defense and also depends those kind of guys though have to go in certain game plans so it's not where you have a guy at a uh, middle linebacker where you know you, your game plan throughout the season is usually pretty solid at a at this kind of hybrid position being at weak or a weak side defensive end or uh, and linebacker too each game that's going to change uh, and so he's going to have a lot of film to go through the staff is too on where he's going to uh, be able to Fit the best against whichever the offense they're going for, but if they can figure it out, you know it's a big job for Fuller and Marv. If they can figure it out, then it's really good production on, on FSU's part. Logan, I don't know if uh, the typical fan realizes how important the next four weeks are. Uh, I was just talking some uh, Texas A&M football and they were running down their visitation weekends for the next four weeks, every weekend of June, and we're talking some studs coming through there, uh, five to ten, top ten play. Everybody that's coming through is basically a top ten player at their position every weekend, five to ten, and those are the official visits. There, then there's going to be all sorts of unofficial visits. So it's the same thing with Florida State. We're not going to uh, really uh, – dig through the the individuals right now unless you want to point out a few people that you'd like to see but basically just how you could feel about this program for 22 in this 22 class today which is still you feel good because a lot of the guys that have committed are some serious players but at the same time man there's a there's there's a lot on the line in the next month and not everybody's just going to boom commit. Of course, some guys are going to take their, their one key commit, their one key visit, I should say, and commit, but most guys are going to take their two or three visits and then think about it for a time. And then there's going to be commitments rolling in, in July. Other guys are obviously going to flip once they get to, to, to visit some games, get back on campus in the fall. So there's going to be various storylines and various uh, different approaches to it. But, we're going to know a lot in six weeks. Uh, I saw some numbers recently that showed how many commits we typically would have in college football at this point versus what we've got right now. And we've got like 10 to 15% of the commits right now in college football than we typically have because of the pandemic and the dead period. And, and the student athletes don't want to commit because they haven't been on campus. So we've only got like 10 or 15% of the commits that we typically have. So the floodgates are just going to open uh, here in four to six weeks after uh, these kids get on campus and make a decision. So the the look of this 22 class could be really different in six weeks. Yeah, I think there's going to be a lot, definitely not even out of few, but across the whole country, like you were saying, Mark, it's going to be craziness once it opens up. I think whenever you go to campus, this changes a lot. You get to bring your family with you, your mom and dad, you know, the mom gets to meet the coach. And that usually is the biggest thing, you know, the mom and 
the mom and the coach. How's that kind of relationship go? Does mama love coach? If that usually is it, then, you know, they're usually, that's usually how it's done. Uh, but, you know, Florida State right now has done a great job during this dead period. They've done a phenomenal Um, from shoot their sports, so they're on a roll right now, and it could get even better with a ton of high class recruits. If I had my list right now, I would. I know Nate will have have it all ready for you guys later this evening. But uh, the the amount of recruits that are coming day after day after day all in the month of June is, is craziness and Logan unfortunately hopefully you can hear me we're, we're losing you I think we did lose you so we'll 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 continue on here hopefully Logan can get that uh, situation Got John Sarian with a comment here. And John, I got to say, this yeah, is pretty obvious here. Right now, I think. All right. You might be back with us. Got to John Sarian making a comment online here. Uh, I got to say, John, this is, uh, I'm not going to, I don't think Logan really needs to comment to this. Uh, John saying, which game this year will be the first good test for the Knowles defense to figure out if it's improved? Notre Dame, game one. Boom. There's, there's a top 10 to 15 offense in the country. I know that they lose Ian Book and a number of offensive linemen, but with Jack Cohen, a quarterback, most likely winning that battle, he's capable, and they're loaded with talent. The offensive line's great. That's a top 15 offense in the country. That is right out of the gate. That's the test. That's a, a, a good one right there. There's not a bunch of Jacksonville States and Sanfords out of the gate for Florida State to warm up on defense and then play a big boy in week three, there's Notre Dame. So that's the first test. That's the test right there. All right. Agreed. Logan, don't know if you saw the betting lines for the over-unders came out uh, just a few days ago. And Florida State's sitting at 5.5, five and a half. What are your thoughts about that? For Notre Dame and FSU? No, for the um, for the win totals, the over-unders for the win totals for the oh, season. Oh, oh. The, the over-unders, oh. five and a half. I, I was about to say, dang, even the betting lines are on FSU's favor this offseason <laughs> for the Notre Dame game. Golly, Norvell's really doing something. Um, I, I've been saying seven for me. Uh, I think seven total overall wins, and that's including bowl game. I'm saying seven. I think I think five is too low in my opinion. I think there's going to be a, a, a big revamp on how this defense is going to look. I'm not saying it's going to be day one, game one, it's going to be switched. I think it's going to take a couple of games on adjusting, like we talked about, who fits best. But I think five and a half is the safest way of betting. I'd go over, though, for me. Got Logan Robinson on here from Noel Game Day. So uh, Noel Game Day is obviously just that, noelgameday.com. You can catch uh, the site right there. Then you can track them to Patreon, uh, the Discord, and also right here on YouTube. Just look up Noel Game Day right here on YouTube. Subscribe right there and get locked in with what they're doing every day covering Florida State football. So you think I cover Florida State football? No, 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 no. I don't cover Florida State football like those boys do. It's every day, nonstop, all the time. It's ridiculous, and it's good. So lock in there. Stay here, but lock in there. That's where you get your, your daily grind on Florida State. Uh, certainly, if you're right here, we will provide some content a little bit every day for you on uh, the Seminoles. All right, so our guy on Facebook here, Monroe, we appreciate you being here, Monroe. And again, um, just just keep it locked in with the notifications and everything that's going on here on YouTube, and uh, we're going to get you set on Facebook, but uh, you may have to track us here because I think we're uh, going to restart on Facebook 
at another spot. But uh, you'll be able to find us if uh, you're locked in here on YouTube. But Monroe is, I don't know that there's any news out there. We'll let Logan address this on the quarterback spot. Not necessarily news, but uh, Milton, Jordan, Travis, of course, we've got a quarterback battle. I think when Mackenzie Milton signed, everybody was just so excited for a guy that has two just explosive years under his belt at uh, at a high level at UCF uh, that it was just assumed that he was the starting quarterback. But Jordan Travis is stepping up, certainly showed some things in spring practice, probably outplayed him for a lot of that time. So where do you, where do you think we stand? If you could get into Mike Norvell's head about uh, – that quarterback battle when they step on the field back in August, when they get back out, out there. Uh Oh, I think we're locked up again. It's just locking up. Let me know whenever it comes back. We are good to go. I think Logan. Okay. Yeah, this thing, I was watching the bars go down, so <laughs> I'll say it real quickly. Milton, I think, has got to, I mean, got to see how fully healthy he is. I think he is 100% ready to go. I think he's 110, but his chemistry is what he's got to work on. He's been doing that this offseason, for what I've been told. He's been running workouts uh, multiple times a day, even. Along with Jordan Travis, those have been the two quarterbacks that have been running workouts right now. It's been interesting to watch what Tate Rodemaker and also Chubba Purdy are doing. Right now, the two guys running these workouts and getting chemistry down with his wide receivers, tight ends, running backs, or Jordan Travis and Mackenzie Milton. The you know the question here, it's a good one. What do you do? Or who's going where? I think Milton is your passing guy. If things, if he if he's really good to go and you feel comfortable with him playing against Notre Dame to start off. And go, so be it. Right now, I still feel like Jordan Travis is the guy to beat. I think right now, if I were going to say before fall camp, I'd expect Jordan Travis to be the one out there taking the first snap against Notre Dame. But I think there's going to be a lot of things where throughout the season, it's going to be a McKenzie Milton slash kind of Jordan Travis duo because I don't know how you keep Jordan Travis off the field. I, I really don't know how you do that. And I think with him having another off season, another film room, another way of building chemistry and, and – working with Dillingham for Jordan Travis, getting passing down and getting more accurate, making his reads, you know, that it could be a really scary kind of quarterback, but having both of them on the same backfield is already a scary combination. And I am expecting to have a, a good amount of packages that Norvell and Dillingham are putting together to see both Jordan Travis and McKenzie Milton on, on the same plays in the same backfield. It's a very scary offense, but Right now, the guy to beat still to me is Jordan Travis. Interesting. That will be one to track during August. That's going to be fascinating to get a little bit of information out here and there and then to see who finally uh, wins the job against Notre Dame. Because, again, like we talked about a second ago, uh, there's no warm-up game. There's no uh, FCS or group of five to get uh, warmed up on and uh, working in that week one, it's right out of the gate. Notre Dame national TV prime time. Let's go get it. And, you know, for as good as Notre Dame's been, and they've made the playoffs two out of the last three years. And Brian Kelly's got one of the top five to 10 programs working in college football right now. And there are definitely a solid, solid favorite in that game. It's not like it's an athletic mismatch. It's not. It's, you know, they're very comparable athletes that are going to be on the field. It's more just about Notre Dame being in the same schemes under the same coaching staff for so long, they will have a new defensive coordinator this year since um, Clark Lee left to take the Vanderbilt head coaching job and they get one of the best out of Cincinnati in uh, Marvin Freeman. But uh, it's just more about Notre Dame's got a program that's been running and churning and effective and stable for so long while Mike Norvell's still building and they're still finding their way at Florida state, but athletically, it's not like you're going to see a big difference uh, by any stretch. Yeah, no, I, there's going to be a lot. It's going to take some time for FSU. Hopefully, this connection is staying strong. I keep on seeing the bars good. go down and it scares me. Okay. But yeah, it's going to be a lot of time, a lot of patience. It's not going to be this year and it might not be next. Who knows? I mean, Florida State starts off the season in two years and Baton Rouge 
uh, not Baton Rouge, but uh, New Orleans at uh, and the Superdome against LSU. So it's going to take a couple of years. Florida State has a stacked amount of neutral side games, home and home. That uh, up for these until 20 first year with Mike Norvell. Uh, there's a lot of young players. You got true, you know, a lot of these transfers come in will also be their first time playing with Mike Norvell. You just got to see see what's clicking. That's why this spring was huge for a lot of these guys. And but, you know, Florida State brought in a pretty good class too. Um, I, you know, you've got Dustin Hill who hasn't. Even and stepped on campus, but we've been talking very highly about McLean and Joshua Burrell, those two, tri- two true freshmen that early enrolled and showed out during both scrimmages that I was at and then along with the spring game. You know, there's a, a lot to be excited about. Most certainly things are heading, I believe, in this right direction. I just, we, we got to see a series, I got to see two series back and forth. I think, you know, and it's going to take a lot of, I think Mike Norvell is the coach to do it, but Florida State's got to get out of that. Feel bad for me. I'm losing. I'm done. I shouldn't be coming to this game feeling like we're going to win. I, I want to tuck my tail underneath my legs. Like, that, that, that can't be the way, the mentality of Florida State. That never that never should be the way inside that stadium, wherever stadium they go. That should never be ever a thought in their brain. It should be that we're going to beat this team by 50 points. That's how it's got to be. But I think – the last couple of years, they don't trust themselves. I think Mike Norvell is working very hard on doing that in the locker room. So we went over the five and a half win total projection by Vegas. You're looking at seven. So you're looking at seven in terms of an estimation. We've covered the schedule before. There's five obvious games that stand out just as, okay, these teams – and a lot can change before November. So the lines could be different. Obviously, some teams will step up. Some teams will be exactly what we thought they were. Other teams are going to um, underachieve and so forth. But as it stands right now, there are five glaring games on the schedule where those five teams are definitely better than everybody else. So we've gone through that. It's Clemson. It's Notre Dame. It's Florida. It's North Carolina and Miami. So seven and five I got to think for you is also going to feel better if let's say they beat everybody they're supposed to beat the other seven. And I'm not saying that those are give me's because there's some, some Wake Forest, Boston College, uh, North Carolina State games that are really good teams that are, that are solid teams, I should say, that are probably seven and five, eight and four type teams that aren't going to be give me's. So let's say they, they come out of this season, like you say, it's seven and five regular season and is it going to matter to you that they were competitive in the five that they lost? I think that's going to put a whole different slant on it and a different vibe if they can go into the off season. And sure, they're probably going to get blown out a couple times, but not all five times. Like if they're competitive in like three out of those five big games and they really give it a go deep into the fourth quarter a couple times against the big teams, that that's going to have a better look and it's going to show us that they're close closer than they've been in a long time. Yeah. The competitive nature, we're going to start off, you know, let's say start off with Notre Dame being competitive in that game is going to be huge. I mean, that's what we're, we as people that cover it and also fans are just looking for, you know, can four state keep this competitive going into the fourth quarter and, you know, if it's a loss by a touchdown, a little over a touchdown, Florida state, you know, fans feel – and uh, they feel better about where this direction is heading. You know, we've listened. We've seen the videos. We've seen the documentaries of Mike Bell and preaching and preaching. And so seeing that, like, actual games are being competitive is – it's going to be key. And you don't want to get blown out all the time. And like you said, it, there's going to be a game or two maybe that, that does happen potentially. But, you know, looking back at where Florida State finished off the season, too – uh, I really like the way they did that. I don't think enough people are really noticing that, but the way Florida State faced Duke after a lo- about a month of break, and they come back, and, you know, was it 
So it wasn't just beautiful. It wasn't perfect game, but on all cylinders, there wasn't a lot of mistakes being made, which I took a note on. Wasn't a lot of uh, p- penalties that we were used to seeing earlier in the season. The offense was clicking. Everything was kind of turning. The defense still had some problems there, and you know that was kind of a beat up group. But uh, I think it goes to show that this team is starting to get a little bit more on the same page. Something that hasn't happened in the last three or four years. Not on the same page. Not believing in themselves. Got and believing in yourselves is big on competing and staying competitive in these games. And I, I feel like Florida State has lost that. Uh, it's starting to kind of come back a little bit, but got to be com- got to be competitive or it ain't gonna sell the tickets. Our guy Jeremy here is saying nine wins. Wouldn't that make you feel good? Nine wins, and we'll have five hundred people on here while I'm on this drive to Texas. Nine I hope wins. so. That's what I need. <laughs> Not. <laughs> I yeah, might be well, rooting for nine wins love. more than everybody. <laughs> I don't know. I'll compete with you there on that one. I, I will say 23. Well, yeah, you will. <laughs> I'll compete with you on that. All right. Uh, we've got some good entertaining content coming up here, Logan. I don't know if you've caught uh, a bit of this in the DM that we have with Jason and James, but um, we've got a nice little matchup coming up here pretty soon. A uh, big debate on the 01 Hurricanes and the 03 or the 13 Seminoles between Jason and Cam Underwood. They're going to duke it out uh, mano y mano. Ooh, now we're talking. Now I always like it when Jason's going after uh, Cam Underwood. Now he he says a lot of things that he's going to do stuff, but he was acting way <laughs> too nice in the last one that we were at. He really disappointed me. Uh, I hope if he really does do this, he doesn't just let you know, kind of cam run the conversation or, you know, Jason go into interviewee. Uh, we, we gotta, we gotta make Jason step up here. And I hope he does. I hope he doesn't allow cam to say anything silly. Well, he should, he should do exactly what you're talking about because this is, this is a matchup that I'm setting up. Not necessarily just those two. I threw it out to everybody, but you, you tend to shy away from the historical stuff. So, you know, you're yeah. locked into what we got you locked in on. And uh, again, which reminds me, everybody, check out our positional units while you're waiting for all this to blow up here in June with all the recruiting. Check out uh, just just all you have to do is go to this channel and type in the position and you'll see the uh, videos that uh, Logan and I put together at every position on the field for Florida State. Uh It was near the end of spring practice and right after spring practice. So check those out. But uh, you're right. So you know what the deal is. Every time I get on here, whether it's Miami or Florida State, that 2001 versus 2013, that thing just a a couple times here in the last few weeks, that's all people wanted to talk about. It was just going nuts. People just and I thought, okay, that's it. That's it. We're, We're going to set something up here. And uh, I'm going to invite every Miami guy. I'm going to invite every Florida State person I've got. And whomever wants to show up for it will show up and and we'll just have this out. And uh, so it pretty much turned out to be Cam and Jason were the two guys that uh, really wanted to do this. So it's just going to be the two of them. So I think we lost Logan there for a second, but uh, yeah, it's just going to turn out to be the two of them. Eyes, but I'm all for it. I have my popcorn ready. I think we're all asking for the time. Uh oh, we're losing Logan. He's uh, on his way to Dallas from Tallahassee. He's got a couple hours left to go, and uh, we thought we would make a go of it. We lost him now, but uh, we've pretty much reached uh, the end of our hour here at uh, Florida State Seminoles Live. So you guys know the deal. We're here every Wednesday at 6 Eastern. Had to go a little bit early today. So no worries there. We appreciate everybody um, staying flexible with the notifications, but nothing's changed in terms of the permanent schedule. Every Wednesday, 6 p.m. Eastern, we'll see if Logan can connect and uh, we will uh, soon say goodbye. Any more comments in the, the chat? And uh, 
well, it's going to be tough on me as I've got all these Florida State fans that watch me. I got all these Miami fans that watch me. And uh, it's going to be Cam versus Jason. And uh, I really don't know if I'm going to make a call on this game or I'll just make that a separate video. I may just let them go at each other. I'll moderate. I will bring to light some statistics and some facts to uh, set the record straight. If I hear any inaccuracies, I'll have to uh, play the pardon the interruption um, role of making sure that uh, everything's truthful and actually fact uh, checked. And um, when it comes right down to it, I'll probably produce a video afterwards and I'll make my call on the game. So I'm going to make 50% of my viewers mad at me. So, but that's uh that's the way it's got to be, I guess. All right. Anybody else? We will let uh, Logan go for the day. He basically saved the show with his uh, appearance uh, on the interstate. So it's good to see everybody out there. Florida State Seminoles live every Wednesday at 6. No time change. We'll see you next weekend. Uh, next week, that would be next week, uh, Wednesday. Actually, you know what? Somebody else might be on the road next Wednesday. So you will have to subscribe, hit the bell for the notifications. That way, you know, when we're going live, I think we'll have a schedule change possibly next Wednesday as well. So hang with us during the summer months and uh, we'll be here at some point during the week live. All right. Appreciate everybody being here. Uh, Venmo, PayPal, and Cash App if you want to contribute to the channel. And um, we appreciate that as always. Uh, we will see you soon. I've got a call-in show tonight at 8. Tonight, 8 o'clock Eastern, call-in show on the main channel. We will see you then. And, of course, smash that like button.